Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math. And today we're learning about exponent properties, and we're going to be talking about all of the exponent properties. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help, you use Minute Math. We're given four exponent properties here, and we're gonna have four more at the end after we finish these, okay? All these properties have, well, some rules that go with them, but when we use them, we can simplify a lot of problems with these little rules. Now, one thing to note, A and B for all these rules are real numbers, and M and N have to be integers, okay? Let's go dive into our first property, the product property. The product property states that if we have a to the m power times a to the n power, that is equal to a to the x or m plus n power. So let's see an example of that. Notice if I have x to the third power times x to the second power right here, what they're telling us is that that is the same thing now as x, the same base, remember they have to be the same here, x to the 3 plus a 2 power, which then comes out to be, well, add the exponents, 3 plus 2 is a 5, x to the 5th power. And so x to the 3rd times x to the 2nd power is the same thing as, well, x to the 5th power. Now let's talk about the next one, the power property. The power property states that if we have a to the m power all raised to the n power, that is the same thing as a to the m times n power. So again, let's deal with x here. That means if we have x to the third power all raised to the second power, my m value is 3, my n value is 2. Notice we're going to be slightly different here. That is the same thing as x to the 3 times a 2 power. 3 times a 2 is a 6, and so we have x to the 6th power right here. And there we see we've used the power property with exponents. Now let's keep on going. We have the product to a power rule here. And let's look what it says. If we have a times b all to the m power, that is the same thing as a to the m power times b to the m power. And this actually has a little use to it. I'm actually going to start with this example right here. Let's say we have, well, 8, notice I just have 1 here, 8 to the, um, let's say, third power, right there. Well, first we say, okay, 8 to the third power, multiply that out, 8 times 8 times 8, I think it's 5, 12. But what this pro pro uh, rule here is saying, we can separate this out. This 8 is the same thing as a 2 times a 4 to the third power. Which means, then, by our rules here, we can separate this to be 2 to the 3rd power times a 4 to the 3rd power. And this actually becomes useful in some interesting case scenarios when you're simplifying some stuff. So this is a great tool to have in your arsenal to we'll know how to simplify a problem. It's not just separating it out. Um, it won't always be given like that. Sometimes you can break it up from an original number like that. So keep that in mind. Now the quotient property here. a to the m power over a to the n power is equal to a to the m minus n, where a is not equal to zero, okay? So let's see that in action. Let's go with x, well, to the third power over x squared. We have a to the m, a to the n, same base of x. That is the same thing as, well, x to the 3 minus 2, we subtract the exponents, 3 minus 2, and that is an x to the first power, right there. And there we have it. We've gone through four properties. I'm going to go erase this, and I'll see you in a second, and we'll have four more properties to review. And so, just like that, we have four more properties to review. Our first one here is the zero exponent property. What it tells us is a to the zero power equals 1, where a is not equal to zero. Well, what can a be? Well, any real number. So what if a is, uh, you know, 972? We raise that to the zero power, bam, it's just a one. Any real number for a, raise it to the zero power, 
you get one, it just can't be zero, your A value. The second one here is quotient to a power property. This tells us that A over B all to the M power is the same thing as A to the M power over B to the M power, where B is not equal to zero. So if we see an example of this, if we had, well, let's say X over Y all to the third power. Well, that could be rewritten as X to the third power over, well, Y to the third power. And if we want to see it with some numbers, let's say we have, well, 1 over, I don't know, uh, 3 all squared. Well, that's the same thing as 1 squared over 3 squared, which, well, you can simplify 1 squared is a 1, and a 3 squared is a 9 right there. The next one here, almost near the end, are the properties of negative exponents. This one has a little two parts to it right here. Okay, a to the negative n power is the same thing as 1 over a to the n power and 1 over a to the negative n power equals a to the positive n power. So let's see an example of each one of these. If we had, well, x to the negative third power, we then would rewrite this to be, well, 1 over x to the positive third power. Similarly, if we had 1 over a to the negative n power, let's say 1 over x to the negative 2 power, that is going to be the same thing as saying, well, x squared. Okay? Think of it as the negative exponent really can move it to the numerator or denominator opposite of where it is. And just make it positive. Lastly, the quotient to a negative exponent. We have a over b all to the negative n power, and that equals b over a to the n power. Notice that the a and b swap places. So let's see an example of that. If we had a 2 thirds, let's say to a negative fifth power, then that would be the same thing as rewriting this to be a 3 halves to a positive fifth power. And from there, if I wanted to simplify, I would, well, apply the rules up here, the quotient to a power property. But right now, I'm just kind of showing how that works. Either way, all these different properties that you've learned are like tools in your arsenal to, well, simplify and solve problems that deal with exponents there. I hope you learned something about the exponent properties and you know them all now. And if you did, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This helps us make more of these free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So as always, thanks for watching.